Hello, everyone. My name is Patrick Callahan. I'm the state representative here in Connecticut in the 108th district. I represent New Fairfield, Sherman, part of the town of New Milford, and part of the city of Danbury. And I'm happy to be here to uh, uh, read to you this morning. When I read to my kids when they were younger, they used to always love this book that I opened this morning. And it's kind of an abbreviated version of some of our favorite uh, Disney stories. And I picked uh, one of my favorites, 101 Dalmatians, this morning. I'm sure many of you have heard this story, but for the ones who haven't, uh, it, it'll be fine for all of you. But, so I'm gonna start with, uh, uh, here we go. Pongo, Perdita, and their 15 puppies lived in a cozy little house in London. The house belonged to their humans, Roger and Anita. They were perfectly happy until they met, you'll guess it, Cruella de Vil, Anita's old schoolmate who simply loved spotted puppies. She wanted to buy them all and make them into spotted fur coats. Roger put his foot down. These puppies are not for sale and that's final. Cruella was furious, but she refused to give up. One night, Cruella's two nasty henchmen, Horace and Jasper, kidnapped the puppies. Let me give you the pictures in the first two pages. All right. Sorry if that was quick. They drove out to Corella's old country estate and waited to hear from their boss. You got to see these two henchmen, though. Uh, that's what they look like. Creepy looking dudes. When the puppies got there, they saw lots and lots of other Dalmatian puppies who had also been snatched by Horace and Jasper. Back at home, Pongo and Perdita could not believe what had happened. Perdita knew at once that Cruella was behind her missing puppies. She's stolen them, sobbed Perdita. Oh, Pongo, do you think we'll ever find them? Pongo knew that the Twilight Park was their only hope. He would bark his message to the dogs in London. Here's Pongo and Perdita. I'll show you guys a picture. All right, next page. They would pick up this uh, twilight bark. They'd pick it up and pass it along to the dogs in the country. And maybe someone would find the puppies. That night, the twilight bark reached a quiet farm where an old English sheepdog no known as Colonel lay sleeping peacefully. Alert, alert, shouted Sergeant Tibbs, a cat who lived on the farm. Vital message coming in from London. The Colonel listened closely. 15 puppies have been stolen, she cried. Sergeant Tibbs remembered hearing barking at the old DeVille place, they headed straight for the gloomy mansion. The Colonel helped Tibbs look through the window. Sure enough, there were the 15 puppies plus their 84 new friends. All right, here's Tibbs and Colonel. Let's see, sorry about that, Tibbs and Colonel. And then that's uh, Cruella's creepy little place. All right, next page. Tibbs and Curl overheard Cruella, Jasper, and Horace talking. When they heard her plans to make coats out of the puppies, they knew there was no time to waste. The Colonel ran off to get word to Pongo and Perdita while Tibbs helped the puppies escape. As soon as Horace and Jasper realized what was happening, they tried to stop the puppies, but it was too late. Pongo and Perdita had arrived and fought off the foolish thugs as the puppies hurried to safety. Once all the dogs were safely out of the house, we got to give you a picture of Cruella here. She's creepy. There's Cruella yelling at uh, the two uh, thugs. And here's the dogs starting to escape. Once all the dogs were, out, were safely out of the house, they thanked the Colonel and Tibbs and went on their way. A black Labrador retriever arranged for them to ride, uh, a ride to London in the back of a moving van that was being repaired. The dogs waited in the blacksmith's shop. Suddenly, Cruella's big car drove up the street. She had followed their tracks and was parked and waiting. But Pongo had a clever idea. There were ashes in the fireplace. If they all rolled in them, they would be disguised in black soot. Then they could get aboard the van without Cruella even noticing it was them. And that's just what they did. It worked perfectly until a, a glob of snow dripped onto a puppy and washed off a patch of the soot. From her car, Cruella could see it was a Dalmatian puppy. They're escaping, she cried as the van took off. There was a really scary chase. Cruella tried to pass the van on the road, but she ended up crashing through a barricade and driving right into a huge pile of snow. Now I have to show you the dogs, the puppies escaping from the previous page and the dogs after they rolled in soot. Sorry about that. There's the puppies escaping. 
And here's the dogs after they rolled in soot. You can see the, how it dripped on the back of a couple of puppies there. Sorry, a little hard to do on Zoom. So after the scary chase, that's where we are. Uh, Corella's car went right through a huge pile of snow and it was a wreck. And that wasn't all. She had lost the puppies. Cruella threw a tantrum. Pongo and Perdita and 99 puppies arrived home safely, much to Roger and Anita's, and Anita's delight. Roger pulled out a handkerchief and wiped Pongo's face clean. What will we do with all these puppies? Anita asked. And here's uh, Cruella's car crashing and here's the Pongo and Perdita arriving back home. There's the car crashing down an embankment. And here's the puppies arriving back home. All right. We'll keep them, Roger answered. He sat down at the piano and composed a song right on the spot. We'll buy a big place in the country and we'll have a plantation, he sang. A Dalmatian plantation. And that's exactly what they did. Here's a picture of Roger playing the, the piano with all the puppies all around. Well, that's, that's a good story that my kids used to love to hear. And uh, I know I have a dog, and I'm sure a lot of you have a dog. But if I, if I came with home with a, a 98 or 99 or 101 dogs, I don't think my wife would be too happy. But I'm sure the kids would. But I hope you all have a, a good day at school. And I hope to see you in person soon. And uh, enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye.